my two colleagues are Flor Guber and Sorana Toma, both based in France. And uh, so what we are presenting is at a very preliminary stage. Uh, and so comments are more than welcome because we are really like constructing our argument and uh, our uh, analysis of data. So uh, what are we uh, investigating in, in this paper? Basically, we are, in, uh, in, we are in, the, in the field of investigating the relationship between labor market outcomes of migrants uh, and uh, social capital. So and there, like, net, as a set of informal networks. Uh, we focus on Senegalese migration, and I will tell something more about the data that we, that we use in, in a minute. Uh, our main questions are, first, to what extent Senegalese migrants rely on social networks for securing employment, and secondly, which is the impact of both network access and network use on la labor market uh, outcomes. So what determines the quality of their job, both upon arrival and uh, uh, later on in the migration trajectory. Uh, the peculiarity of our da data set is that it's a multi-sided survey. So we have, like, within our data, observation of Senegalese mi migrants, both in European context and in African context. And we're speaking about migrants in France, Italy, and Mauritania. Unfortunately, we still haven't exploited a fourth subsample that are com is composed by Senegalese migrants in Ivory Coast. That is one of the like, way forward uh, part of the, uh, of the story. So one of the questions that we will try to explore is how does the context of the reception shape the role of networks in uh, labor market uh, uh, attainment? Why we think that this is relevant? So first, because like migrants' labor market attainment and trajectories are a major concern in the policy debate. On one hand, because they prove to be an important vector of integration. Uh, and, but on the other hand, because it's also a context where it's also possible to identify migrants', migrants disadvantages, both with respect to native population and also in some cases with respect to their own status before uh, departure. Social capital is often considered as playing a role in labor market processes. This is a widely developed literature. And there is some evidence that migrants use informal networks in labor market more than natives because of lack of other uh, sort of uh, channels. Um, third, uh, as we know that intra-African migration is extremely relevant in terms also num numerically and like relatively understudied, we think that another motivation that pushed us, us in this work is to exploit the multi-sided nature, as I, as I was mentioning. Very briefly, a literature review. Well, the literature uh, that you don't see, but the main points are there. So there is a wide literature, of course, on the effect of social capital on labor market attainments from Granovetter on, and I'm not going to, to spend uh, too much time on this. The case of migrants have been studied first in the Mexican US uh, migration and more recently as, as, as developed in, in the European setting. And the main focus of this literature is to identify, I would say, maybe I'm not, like, I'm over-summarizing, but is to identify which kind of social capital help and which kind of social capital do not help. So the distinction between bridging and bonding social capital is the main point, I would say, of this literature. This will not turn out as a very relevant point in our data, and we will try to develop others not saying that this is not relevant at all, but this will not turn out as main, as a, as a, as a crucial point in our, uh, up to now in our analysis. The data that we use. The data that we use is the uh, database collected through the Middas survey. That is a survey conducted in 2009 among Senegalese migrants in France, Italy, Mauritania, and Cote d'Ivoire, as I was saying before. We use the three first data sets, just because we still have to work on the fourth one, that leaves us with a little bit less than 900 observations. The survey is very rich in terms of modules on post-migration status and on network, and uh, both friends and family uh, network. It's the, the fruit of an international collaboration between several institutions, and among which two institutions I collaborated with, it is Dial uh, in France and Fieri in, uh, in, in Italy. Uh, they are quite, let's say, old data. Not, I mean, we are used to work with, this, with data that dates like 10 years back, but a lot of things occurred in between. So this is something that can be discussed. So how far our results can be useful uh, today, uh, meaning that uh, so in between there has been the economic crisis and there has been the refugee crisis and the political spotlight on migration. 
um, just this word in, you're making signs when I'm uh, on the time. Yeah, uh, you do? Yeah. Okay, thank you. So just uh, uh, a snapshot on the descriptive statistics. Uh, what we dis so here what we present is the statistical differences between the Mauritanian and the European sample. That is not probably the best way to represent a, fo a picture of our uh, sample because in fact the European sample is not homogeneous at all and there are huge differences between Italy and France as we will see more deeply in, in, uh, in our uh, uh, analysis. But overall we can say that the migration to Mar Mauritania with respect to the European uh, countries displays a higher share of women, younger uh, people migrated earlier uh, and, and on average less uh, educated. Just to have a snapshot of what we are, because of course we are speaking of very like heterogeneous people uh, moving. So what, what do we investigate and how? So we, as I announced, we are doing an analysis in two steps, where the first one is to identify who are the people who rely on networks to find a job. So where the dependent variable is network use, so the job search channel. And the second step is how do different networks and job search processes affect the job characteristics? So where the de dependent variable is labor market uh, attainment. For both steps, we have measures of both, both, both first and last jobs. Methodological problems are huge when, when trying to identify the relationship between social capital and labor market outcome because everything is intertwined. So we have two main problems. One is reverse causality. You can get social capital from your, your employment. And to solve this, we use time. So we have measures of social uh, networks before the first job and before the last job. So in terms of reverse causality, we try to use time to identify the good direction. But the main problem is endogeneity. So the idea that there can be some other factors that affect both network access and labor market outcome and, network, and, and, and both network use and labor market outcome. We will use instrumental variable uh, techniques to try to address this. And this is one of the main points of our conclusion is exactly that we are not like exiting the endogeneity problem. And this we will see. Uh, later on. Um, so, which are our dependent variables? I hope, like, I'm going through the, our, the variables that we use. So, for, in our first step, the dependent variable is the, the variable derived from a direct question. So, how did you find your first and how did you find your current job? And we can, so that we, we know if this is a formal channel or in, an informal channel, and within informal, if it's through family networks or friends networks. Labor market outcome is mainly measured by the ISA score that is innocuous. It derives mainly from the work of Gazenbaum, Traiman, and co-authors done in the 90s. That is the idea of associating a score to the ISCO classification, the international uh, uh, classification of occupations that tries to capture uh, the average income and average education level in each occupational sector. It has a lot of limitations as an, uh, as an index because it's based on weighted average of uh, uh, like education and income among male, male population in 16 countries. So I'm really, we are quite aware of the limitation of this uh, index uh, and uh, comments are more than one come on how to, to, to deal with it. We try to couple this with other indicators. One is the probability of being employed at survey time. And uh, lastly, the, we use categorical variables. So like unskilled manual, skilled manual, uh, unskilled manual, unskilled, non-manual skilled, and self-employed to, to have a more categorical distinction of, of employment. Social capital variables. Uh, we have, of course, like the use of social capital in this uh, are, is first a dependent variable and then an independent variable. An inter, but it's always the same one. The access to social capital is measured as, as family network, both at arrival and at, uh, before the current job. Size of network known before migration and before the current job. And whether there are some natives in the network, meaning French in France, Italians in Italy, and Mauritanians in Mauritania. Uh, again, so this is a snapshot of the descriptive statistics of social capital variables. Again, as we, will, we see, so there is overall on, in Mauritania greater use and access of, to, 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 of networks, but this doesn't capture uh, all because, for example, the network use uh, to, find the, sorry, to find the first job, uh, so the share of people using network to find the first job is, higher, is the highest is in Italy. 
So, I mean, this is to go back to the fact that we have to explore more also this, uh, this aspect. Uh, we control for uh, a number of intuitive uh, variables, so education, uh, education in the host country, uh, mm, location of the family in, uh, back home in Senegal, characteristic of migrations and especially whether the person, person, person entered undocumented, uh, and uh, uh, the sex dummy and the destination countries uh, uh, dummy. So, first block of analysis is uh, uh, who uses networks to find a job, and we have both, uh, uh, the first table is upon, uh, for the job obtained upon arri uh, arrival, and the second one is for the current job. So, first of all, <coughs> what we see is that here is that both in Mauritania and uh, in Italy, uh, it seems that, uh, so the model, sorry, is a multinomial logit model where the reference category is formal channel, and so the coefficients give, tells us whether the, the family and the friends, so who uses the family and the friends channel more with respect to the formal channel. So we have a higher use of, inform, of both informal channels, both in Mauritania and uh, uh, in Italy. Um, so overall, what we can say is that uh, who uses network more? Women, both family and, um, and friends uh, network. Uh, and undocumented migrants, especially on what concerns the family network. Um, and the people arrived uh, young, age at arrival, especially on what concerns uh, the, the family network. Um, so, uh, these are the major uh, results of who uses network. It seems that network access has a positive impact on network use. If we look at the number of the, of the probability of using the family channel, uh, has a positive correlation or, or with the availability of family uh, members at destination upon arrival. And there seems that there's a degree of substituability between family and friends network. So having relatives in the destination countries lowers the probability of using friends' uh, network. But still, there is a correlation between network use, network access, and network use. Basically, at survey, so for the last job, it's not exactly survey time, but like the determinants of network use for the last job are, are very similar. Undocumented migrants display a different, uh, so uh, uh, before they had a higher probability of using a friends' network, now they don't, this, doesn't hold anymore, but they have a lower probability of using the, the, the family network. What is interesting here is that education starts to play a role. While for the first job, education didn't play a role in the probability of using networks, here it does negatively. So more educated people tend to use less, to rely less on informal channel. So main findings, just to summarize uh, what I just said, is that Initially, youth, women, and undocumented migrants have higher probability to find job through informal channel. This results holds for the current job, this, but not for the undocumented, uh, or for people entered undocumented, uh, undocumented. Education lowers the probability of finding a job through informal channels, but not for the first employment, only subsequently. And there is a correlation between family network access and probability of finding a job through informal channels. So social ties seems to play a role in job search method, and they kind of substitute each other, family and friends channel. Second block of analysis. So how does all, all of this impact the um, employment, uh, the, 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 the employment uh, status? So the first, this first table, Display some OLS and finally an a IV uh, model uh, to try to, to, to account for endogeneity of the occupational status upon arrival. So the dependent variables is the is a code that I presented uh, just before. Uh, I don't show some controls, but in the end I will try to comment a little bit uh, on them. So what we have is that apparently. So in the first column, what we see is that the size of social networks, so one of our, our measures of network access, seem to play a negative role on, on the labor market attainment. Uh, I don't show this, but this is also uh, holds if we look to bridging social capital. So to the number, not the total number of people in the network, but to the number of natives. So the French in France, uh, Italians in Italy, and Mauritania in Mauritania. Still, the, the coefficient seems to be negative. If we interact, uh, so the, this result is also true for network use. So, 
I don't know if I have a pointer. Um, here, what we see is that also both using friends and family channels seem to have a negative effect. Okay, I try to speed up. Uh, from this table, there are two main things that are relevant uh, uh, to, to, to our analysis. Is one is that these results hide differences in uh, the different countries. So it seems that France uh, uh, network has a negative impact in Italy and Mauritania, while the family network has a negative impact in, Fran in France. So there are differences of the role of networks, as we like. The, 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 this was one of our, of our questions, but. Probably, like, second main uh, result is that this is not robust to, to instrumentation. So what we do in the last column, column is, is to instrument the network use, so the use of network of informal channels, uh, with its predicted probabilities after a multinomial logic. And this, the, the negative effect of, of network use disappears. And also, I don't show it, but the, the effect of network uh, access. So, the, so this is the main thing that I would say should be retained also in the following slides. So we tend to find an, an, an apparent negative effect of both network use and network access that is not robust to our uh, inst instrumentation techniques. So here what we, we, we display is the probability of being employed, so a probit model and an IV probit. In the probit model, what we find is the size, size of social network seems to play a negative role, especially driven by the Mauritanian and the Italian subsamples, but this is not robust to instrumentation. Occupational status for the last uh, job. Uh, again, we find that... Uh, um, uh, Let's look to the, to the second column. I, sp I skip something. If not, I will totally run out of time. We find the negative uh, effect of having found a job through the network that is interesting because it's totally driven by the French observation, while in Italy the coefficient displays a positive sign. So this is another thing to be explored more. But again, this is not robust to instrumentation. Uh, I can go back to the instrumentation, so what we use in a, as an instrument in the, in the different cases, but I don't stay on this now, not, not to run out of time. Uh, the last uh, slide here, what we use is the categorical uh, distinction of occupation. So try to see which is the probability to shift from the unskilled manual to uh, unskilled, to, from the unskilled manual to the unskilled non-manual to the skilled and to the self-employed. There is no endogeneity control here, so we cannot uh, uh, claim any causality link. What it seems is that the network seems to channel um, uh, people towards the self-employment. And this is, I wanted to report this because it seems consistent with other recent research. So even if we cannot, like, it's, it's not, uh, we, can, we didn't do any robustness check. So, two, uh, two, two slides of, uh, uh, just of a conclusion. So the main findings of this part of the analysis is that social networks seems to play different roles in, uh, in different contexts, and there is not a sharp divide, Europe-Africa, but also the European sam sample displays a great extent of heterogeneity. There is an apparent negative effect of both network access and network use, but it doesn't show to be robust to instrumentation. So we cannot claim causality in this, uh, in this uh, negative effect, in these negative coefficients. I didn't speak about controls. Just say some words. Control playing the expected way. Education and diploma destination have positive effect on labor market outcome, while being undocumented upon arrival has a negative and long-lasting effect, not on the probability of being employed, but on the quality of, uh, of employment. Ethnicity variables are often significant. Uh, we are wondering what does it mean? Does it capture like a rural urban divide or does it capture network, some network that is not captured by the other variables? Uh, so this is the question we are left uh, in mind. So overall, networks, so what we would retain from this work is that networks are highly endogenous. And this should put into perspective a big bulk of like pessimistic literature on, uh, on network and uh, labor market attainment. And it is really necessary to look at who, who uses networks. So in our case, especially like women, youth, undocumented, less educated, uh, that means that we could be interpreted 
possibly, and this is open to debate, if they are like more vulnerable categories uh, who resort to networks, but probably in the absence of networks, they would be, they would be worse off. And uh, so this is the main message that I think can be drawn from the analysis uh, up to now. To be done a lot, I already anticipated something, explore more the differences across countries besides the network interaction, introduce the, uh, the Davorian sample, do an analysis on wages, that is the only continuous variable that we can ca have on, uh, on labor market attainment, uh, and to understand more what these et ethnic dummies uh, represent. Thank you, I hope not to be too long.